I, I understand now, I really do understand, you know, uh, Jesus walking on water, uh, his body going through walls, mm -hmm. that it really is an unknown to us at this moment dimension and, and abilities. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Jacob Sheriff podcast. I just wanted to uh, pop in for a second and let you know about the episode that you're about to watch. This is one of our bonus episodes that we like to release in between seasons. And uh, one of the really cool things that we get to do at Jubilee each year is sit down with our guest speakers and record these bonus episodes for you guys. Uh, and this this conversation was uh, really uh, it was really exciting and really fun to get to capture. It's actually with Andrew Womack and Pastor Dwayne. And uh, while we were getting stuff set up, um, they just start talking. And it was really interesting, fascinating stuff. They're talking about eschatology and uh, cultural stuff and all kinds of interesting things. And we we're like, man, we're not even ready to record yet. So, so we just hit the record button. And so as you'll see, as you go into this, like it's mid conversation. We didn't want to interrupt them. The, the conversation was good. And we didn't want to do any sort of like fancy intro in the moment and disrupt that. And so... Uh, we just jumped right into it, and uh, you'll get to to hear it. And even at one point in the in the conversation, you'll hear Pastor Dwayne say, "Like, hey, when are we going to start this thing?" And we're like, "Oh, we're already going." And so, uh, I hope that you uh, enjoy this conversation and that it uh, is a blessing to you. Enjoy. What it means to rule and reign forever and ever—that's the whole telos that things are moving toward. That, that means there's a place for hope, for imagination. Uh, the way I, I'm not saying I understand it, but like the way I'm trying to see how this works together is there's some, some, some movement towards the future, even in new heavens and new earth, hope. Um, and anyway. I've not I'm thought a, about that, but in Romans 8, it says that once you see it, why do you yet hope for it? And um, so I don't know. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. I don't know how we could live without faith in eternity, but when, once everything is reality, you don't have faith for it anymore. So is there uh, still billion-dollar building projects in the I, heavens and I the have earth? thought about that, and I don't have an answer. I don't <clears> think <throat> that the scriptures are revealed. It all be speculation. But I can't believe that we're going to be doing nothing. There's got to be uh, absolutely. things to do. <laughs> I'm yeah. definitely not going to be sitting around singing 24-7 <laughs> like what I brought up, was brought up under. Oh my I mean, I love worship and I love singing, but I'm not going to, for the rest of eternity, just be singing. I'm going to be doing something. You know, I, any any time I've heard, you know, worship leaders or whatever say like, this is what heaven is like. This is what eternity is like. It's never been a worship service I've enjoyed. Mm. It's always been one that's like, I'm kind of just like being drugged through. Any worship service I've enjoyed, it's like, no one said that. Like, this is what heaven's like. I do believe that we are going to, when we see the real glory of God, how awesome he is, that, uh, man, we're going to be so thankful that we made it in, that it'd take probably a, a couple oh. of billion years for me just to yeah. say thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, not, I heard one guy's story. I forgot who it was. I think it might have been the guy out in North Carolina. But anyway, he he was talking about he he went to heaven and saw people that were holier than him, people that had been preachers and stuff like this, cast into hell. And as he got closer to the line, he thought, oh, God, man, I haven't lived as holy as they have. And he got in. And when he was accepted, he said he just was overwhelmed with thankfulness. And I think when we mm -hmm. see Absolutely. how ungodly we are relative to the Lord, it's going to be, we, we won't think the way we think now. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, and I think what I'm trying to say there too is I'm, that's not all I'll be doing. I'll be yeah. doing that while I'm still living some type of life in relationship with God, not separate. They'll, they'll be together. I'll be worshiping absolutely. I'll be praising absolutely. I'm, I was just thinking that concept that I grew up under was that's all we do is we just sit and praise God. That's it for for eternity. Uh, and we'll have an eternal thanksgiving for sure and worship. Uh, 
Did you ever read Ruth Springer's book, Intramurals? Mm-hmm. Man, I never even heard awesome. of it. Really? Yeah, it was. She wrote it in the 1880s, right after the Civil War, and you know, I mean, it was the highest percentage of people die, and people were dealing with death and grieving over stuff. And she died, and according to Earth time, she was only gone like six minutes, and then she came back. But she experienced three years in heaven. Wow. And she wrote about it, and she says, I'm making no attempt to explain it. She says, this is just what I experienced. And she wrote all of that. And I had, um, oh, that lady minister, um, anyway, she gave me that book, and I thought I'd just read a little bit of it. I wound up staying all night, up all night long reading wow. that It was one of the most powerful things. And when I got home, I had it in my suitcase. And when I got home from the office, Jamie had unpacked my suitcase, and she started reading it. She was just sitting there staring out the window. And I mean, for two or three months, it was all I could do to stay on the earth. Wow. I wanted to go to heaven so bad. Wow. 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 It was awesome. What's the name? Oh, well, I'll get the name. Later. Intramuros, or My Dream of Heaven. Hmm. It's uh, got multiple names. It's been, re- it's been out of print and reprinted hmm. and stuff. But it, And there's things in there that, you know, y- you can't. Uh, verified by scripture and she says I, I'm i just telling you what I saw what right, she experienced right. mm-hmm. but it was awesome it was do you think awesome. that's part of what Paul was saying that he saw things unlawful uh, in the third heaven I don't know meaning you can't even utter it yeah I've you can't I actually explain had it. a dream one time where I heard singing in heaven and it was awesome and when I woke up you can't describe it it's mm-hmm. not it's not the same melody. It's not mm-hmm. right. it's the harmony. Everything's different. Right. So it's undescribable. I don't know. I knew when I when I was in heaven, that little girl in the ICU room put music. She wasn't supposed to do that uh, on the phone and set it by my ear. And I remember wanting to talk to the Lord that this music is not any good. I thought I was in heaven. And that's the music of heaven. And I knew heaven's music is better than this. This is our music. And while it's good for us on the earth, it Mm -hmm. sucks up in heaven. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just knew that this is not the music of heaven. (laughs) It's just too bad. (laughs) And it was good. I mean, it was a Christian music station. But I mean, I just knew something's wrong. I thought I was in heaven at that moment. I was going back and forth. And so... Well, I'm, I mean, it would be expected that there would be radical transformation. Um, you know, John, uh, 1 John 3, beloved, we are his children now, but what we shall be is not yet appear. But when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So it's going to be a radical transformation. However, would you think, or what would be your thoughts on, would there be any congruency in uh, – including a transformation, but like congruency to, I mean, you guys are wired to be teachers. There's teaching like, like that. It, it would seem odd to me that that would just completely end like that, that that doesn't experience transformation, but not eradication. Well, in this lady's thing, again, I don't know that that's accurate, but she, there were great buildings and there are amphitheaters and you'd go over and hear Moses preaching and teaching and, and there's people explaining things and doing stuff all throughout heaven. Hmm. There's lakes, there was mountains. I do believe that, that it's just everything on steroids mm-hmm. in beauty that God created and originated and will complete a truly new heaven and a new earth. And while it would be so different to me than yeah. what we have now, it still will have a similitude of what we are living and going toward. Yeah. I, I have always thought that there would still be learning because God's knowledge is infinite. And while we'll know even as we're known, mm-hmm. we know that, that somehow or another we're still going to live lives where we're, we're, we're progressing to something. Right. I don't know what, but something. Uh, I, I just don't see an arrival ever an arrival this is it it's yeah. over yeah. uh well i don't mean I, god just doesn't seem that way to humans, me humans i don't i mean god 
you know, being made in his image, uh, if we're, if you, if you take away sin, I mean, humans are capable of incredible things. Um, otherwise, I mean, that's how God made us, but it seems like I, 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 it's hard for me to think that we would have the capacity to be omniscient. So that means that we, we wouldn't become all knowing at, at one time or seems like I maybe ever, I don't know. Um, but I mean the, the final word on in scripture for it, uh, in revelation 22 is, uh, the tree of life is on either side of the river flowing from the throne of God and its fruit is for food. So, I mean, whatever food is, I like the, think that there's no calories in it but <laughs> but there's some some kind of nourishment and its leaves are for the healing of the nations so there's something whether or not that's that's a the nations being a word he uses as a reference point not as a like a reality like are there nations in new heavens definitely not as we see them or understand them now or maybe he's just using that as a reference point to just get you in a headspace not talking about the thing itself in the same way i mean he goes up and he starts explaining you know his 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 upper body's like you know white and his lower body's like fire it's like well, he's using as many metaphors as possible to explain what he cannot explain um but uh but fruit is for food healings for the nations uh and they shall reign forever and ever. And so it's like reigning. There's, there's an exercise of something that is a reality in new heavens and new earth for eternity. So well, the new Jerusalem is going to have nations outside that they will not allow into the new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Who are those? <laughs> I don't know. Dogs and sorcerers at least. Are out but there. did you know that um, <laughs> God is infinite? There's no searching of his understanding. So mm -hmm. I don't think we will ever, ever, uh, exhaust God's creative ability to do stuff. So it happens, eternity is going to be awesome. And within that, you know, God's image in us mm -hmm. to create, to rule, to have dominion. Uh, uh, these are beautiful mysteries to ponder. But it's difficult gonna, it's to be awesome. It, that's the main thing. I don't know what thing. it's going to be, but it'll be it'll awesome. awesome. Amen. And anyone that creates too rigid of a doctrine around it is piecemealing tiny hints and mysteries. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably not the most helpful to get a rigid doctrine around it. I, I, I didn't experience a whole lot that I've heard about other people, you know, that have died. And yet the little I experienced is hard to communicate. And I still have a concern if I talk too much about it, somebody's going to make a doctrine out of something or run with it mm -hmm. or contradict other teachings even I've had. Yeah. Uh, uh, so it, 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 it would sure be difficult to communicate, and I didn't really see a lot. Yeah. I saw Urias in that situation uh, and Hannah, and I still can't communicate that. I can't communicate the different dimensions, mm -hmm. that it was a different dimension totally. Uh, anyway, I'm uncomfortable even talking about it, and I experienced it. What if I got a theoretical physicist to come and talk? <laughs> Maybe we could get something. <laughs> Quantum physics. I, I understand now. I really do understand, you know, uh, Jesus walking on water, uh, his body going through walls, mm -hmm. that it really is an unknown to us at this moment dimension and, and abilities. Uh, I got that much out of it that uh, this is just amazing, uh, awesome. And a few things like that begin to make sense, how that Jesus was able to walk in that, bring that dimension here. Mm -hmm. He truly was the kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And he, he, he bypassed natural physics and 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 got into a dimension at times he didn't live in it yeah but he definitely walked in something that you can't explain with our present knowledge yeah you cannot explain with the present knowledge we have of of of, of a three-dimensional world 
uh, uh, how to walk on water. Now, by faith, we can still, I draw off of that, of miracles and that all things are possible. Right. But I mean, he just, every now and then, he brought the full manifestation of heaven after the resurrection, knowing our bodies mm-hmm. are going to be so different. He still ate, mm-hmm. uh, but he went Praise through God. a wall. How do, you, how do you explain that and it not get weird yeah. or mystical or, or a little bit crazy? But he did it. And we'll be able to do it. Whatever whatever that new heaven and new earth is like, it'll be so much of heaven. It's called the new heaven and the new earth because I think there's a merging. Mm-hmm. There's a merging of heaven and earth where there'll be things similar to us about earth, but unknown that was about heaven, that heaven came to earth, the kingdom and God's will on earth as it is in heaven makes heaven now and earth new. Uh, and our experience new, and anyway, it's amazing to me thinking about it. But I'm, I'm one thing I'm super excited about is teleportation. I'm not gonna lie. Well, uh, how do you explain Philip? Exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, how Somehow, do you explain even that in this space time continuum? That, that does not match our three dimensional world, and and yet it. And I've read it and read it, and I mean, he got transported. I don't see another way. I've never talked to you about that. I don't see another way to see that, that yeah. the Spirit picked him up and took him uh, supernaturally mm-hmm. to another place. Now, whether whether we're supposed to be living like that every day now, you know, I I, I feel I feel falling short big time. <laughs> I prayed for it many uh, times. Yeah, well, I've asked. <laughs> <laughs> I have. But I haven't received. No, uh, I wonder uh, if I make it with my suitcase make it. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that's the mercy of God. Mm-hmm. It's like he knows I can't. If I get transported without my pick, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to get started? <laughs> oh, we've started. Oh. That's what I figured. <laughs> okay. Okay. My bad. No, nope. It's really great. Um there, though, however, something that's an interesting thing going on right now is um, there are the the number of scientists. The more they're learning, the more of them are coming to faith. Um, it might not yet all be faith in Jesus, but there's they're they're coming to the ends of scientific reasoning, being able to explain everything. And the more they're learning, the more they're like, there's no final natural explanation for this absolutely uh, and it's it's actually really interesting and i think that and i don't know how to explain it but i think that is a part of what i think the lord showed me about the third great awakening is that it is not just saved people mm-hmm. but that lost people whether they get saved or not and then, and it, it sounds contradictory in my own head but there god is pulling veils back yeah of, of his glory, he'll be pulling these veils back of this does not make scientific sense, but it is a reality. Yeah. And, and I mm-hmm. do believe that's part, at least of the, of the third great awakening is, 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 and I don't want to name any names, but you see it even in uh, Hollywood type people that mm-hmm. they're making sense mm-hmm. that they're on a, they're on a, a path of, of, of process and thinking that we who have renewed our mind, this is the path we live on. They're starting to see that path and the path of the of darkness and turning from it. Now, again, yeah. whether they're making Jesus Lord and getting saved, uh, that should come out of the awakening. But I don't think everybody's going to get saved, but I think everybody's going to see things clearer. Would this be maybe a way of phrasing it? Uh, you know, the Apostle Paul talked about a, a door of faith was opened to the Gentiles. Would it be that like, God is in hundreds of thousands of different ways from, you know, particle physics to Hollywood to, I mean, all the different venues and areas. God's bringing them to the door of faith. And what our responsibility as the church is to ensure that we're present at that door to get it open and invite them in. I, I, I love that. I think that's what I was trying to say is that I think, I know this, I've always believed it. Now I'm seeing it more and more. I, I, I honestly believe that people will not have an excuse in the day of judgment that God will make himself so known mm-hmm. that they have to, they can't stumble into hell. Nobody's yeah. going to stumble into hell. 
they're going to have to choose. They'll be right at, and it's a good way to put it, at that door, it's clear, and they have to clearly make a decision to unbelieve. Yeah. Uh, nobody goes to hell by accident. Uh, nobody goes to hell not knowing that they're going to hell. God, in his justice, I believe, will make himself so known in these end of the end of this age. This age. Uh, the grace age uh, that this could be the last. I right. don't know that it is. He didn't tell me that. I, I haven't heard Andrew talk about this much, but uh, I don't know that this is one of the last great awakenings yeah. before the great and terrible day of the Lord, the day of, of our Lord in, in, in final judgment. But uh, I, I do see it happening. Um, I've heard the phrase, and any quippy phrase like this probably has its edges of its truth. But um, I've heard it said, God will let anybody into heaven that can stand it. Um, that there's people who've hardened their heart. The Romans 1 kind of uh, uh, downward spiral that they've hardened their hearts so much that they can't stand it. Um, I, again, a, a phrase like that is going to get you, you can't exhaust it. But I don't disagree with what Dwayne's saying, but I think that, that during this awakening that, that believers are going to come alive and there will be mm -hmm. people that aren't believers, but they will come to recognize the truth and be influenced by it. And this is not really contradictory, but at the same time, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, God is going to send a strong delusion so yeah. that people won't even know which restroom to go into, so that yeah. they will sit here and think, you know, call good evil and evil good and all of those kind of things. And I think there's going to be a separation. Yeah. So I don't ever think that everybody's going to come around yeah. to where they're seeking the Lord or acknowledging the truth, but I do believe that believers will there will be people influenced by believers but then there's going to all of this gray area is going to be gone there will be people either hot or cold and i think we're seeing that now that's what's happening so maybe a way to describe that would you say that we're we're living in a time where the contrast is getting higher absolutely where there was said, a lower contrast in other decades or generations. I said this back in the 70s when I was witnessing to people and people would say, well, of course I'm a Christian. I live in the United States. They actually pulled coins out of their pocket and said right here, it says, in God we trust. <laughs> they thought that was making them a Christian. And it was so hard because people were so basically moral yeah. relative to today. And I used to say back then, man, I'm looking for the day when it, people are either hot or cold. You have, don't have to go in and try and convince them that you aren't a Christian just because you live in a so-called Christian nation. And I, that's happened. Nowadays, yeah. people are yeah. not claiming Christianity. It's not cool to be a Christian. And yeah. I think it's actually good. I, I do, too. Uh, the, the years ago, uh, I felt like the Lord revealed to me uh, his glory, and that to those who love the Lord, the glory of the Lord, the essence of his being, this consuming fire right. uh, of holiness, purity, clean, to us, it's beautiful. To us, it draws us. But to someone who is a child of darkness, mm -hmm. that kind of light is torment. Mm -hmm. And I actually did a, a, a message on hell years ago, and I don't promote it much. It didn't go <laughs> over very well. Uh, but that the eternal fire of hell, there's nowhere God's not present. He's omnipresent. And hell in a dimension is the glory of God that torments people who love darkness. Mm -hmm. That's the screaming. That's the gnashing of teeth is that what is so beautiful to me as a child of light draws me to a child of darkness, creature of darkness, yeah. like a cockroach. Mm -hmm. you know, I grew up in Florida mm -hmm. and the cockroaches were like as big as Volkswagens. I mean, they were just <laughs> huge. And, and they were creatures of darkness. And when mm -hmm. you turn the light on, it would torment them. Yeah. They, would, they would scurry, they would, they would just hide and run. Uh, and, and the glory of God is like that to a creature of light. It draws you to a creature of darkness. It torments you. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's what we're going to be seeing too, that 
the body of Christ at large, to me, is not prepared for. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this great conversation with Andrew Womack and Pastor Dwayne. Uh, if you would take the time right now, uh, if you haven't already, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. We really want this conversation to get out to as many people as possible. And you taking those two simple steps really helps us do that. Uh, if this content is a blessing to you and you're enjoying it, just tap that like button, hit that subscribe button. All right, back to the, back to the conversation. There was such a lukewarmness years ago. There wasn't that divide. Now, you just say the name of Jesus, either people's face lights okay. up, they, hallelujah, what, what is the Lord saying to you? Or you say the name of Jesus and they want to pass laws. They want to imprison you. Mm-hmm. They want to cast you out. They want to forbid you to speak in the name of Jesus. They want to beat you. They this gnash all, their teeth. They gnash their teeth. They scream. Uh, I'm not, this isn't a perfect illustration. I'll, I'll all be illustrations short. have their boundaries. They, they collapse at some point. But when Trump got elected, and I'm not saying Trump is the glory of God. I'm not saying Trump is the Messiah. I'm simply saying he represents something that torments those mm-hmm. that want to imprison anybody that disagrees with him. And when he got elected, there were people mm-hmm. oh, screaming at the moon wailing, and I'm looking at that. I actually saw this, Mm -hmm. a video of people just by this man being elected. And I mean, if he is on the glory train and chain, I mean, he's probably way down at the bottom (laughs) and they're screaming and howling at the moon. They're so tormented that this man got elected. Can you imagine them meeting Jesus is my point. Mm -hmm. There won't be, uh, I heard a, a friend of mine one time say that, well, there's a point where, you know, when Jesus manifests and everybody really sees him for who he is, they're going to they're gonna want to wanna serve him and commit to him. And I'm thinking, brother, I love you. But no, if you reject God and harden your heart long enough, hell will literally be torment for eternity, wailing and gnashing of teeth mm-hmm. because you're a child of darkness. You're cast into outer darkness. Mm-hmm. And yet the glory of God is the glory of God. Uh, C.S. Lewis wrote a, like a parable type book, uh, The Great Divorce, where he just sort of explored this idea of heaven and hell and someone like exploring. Uh, anyway, there's so many different layers, but one of the ways he described hell, there was like this bus to hell. Um, and uh, where he describes heaven with just beauty and, and community and love uh, and this person's struggling with it because they're like resentful or whatever. They go to hell and it's like, uh, it's very dingy and like the streets are empty. And you start seeing how basically he describes it as people have um, moved further and further away from one another because they just can't stand each other. They can't, they're, they're so self-absorbed. And he, he tells a story that like they take this many month journey out to find Napoleon Bonaparte who's just um, like in misery in his own house, like just like so ego driven that he's just consumed by himself. And so like he describes it as, as uh, like darker by moving away and more like establishing your own kingdom by getting away from everybody else to where you're utterly alone, uh, stuck inside yourself. Uh, And um, it's just a real interesting way of imagining, obviously in parable form, um, this idea of outer darkness that it's that, like they were invited and his, the way he's describing it, it's like they're invited, but they're choosing themselves to, to drive themselves further and further away because of their own hatred and self-absorption and unforgiveness and resent uh, and like uh, not letting go of the resentment of their own history. And so like they're blind to the reality that they've spent so many, so long out in like where it would take months to get to this. That's how far. And they just keep, every time there's a disagreement, they just keep moving further and further away. Anyway, that's just what made me think about that. I believe there is going to be isolation in hell. I don't think that people are going to get any comfort from being around other people who are miserable Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And also the parable in Luke uh, chapter, what is it, 15, 16, about the um, rich man went to hell. Mm -hmm. It says, Abraham told him, remember that you in your lifetime, I think that uh, one of the biggest parts of hell is going to be remembering. Mm -hmm. And every single person is going to climb over thousands of times that God tried to convict them. They'll remember every time they've rejected the Lord, Mm -hmm. it's going to be torment 
Frank Sinatra is going to have that song, I Did It My Way, playing 24 hours a day. <laughs> that does sound tormenting like him. I'm, I'm, you, just, you just encourage me. I'm going to heaven. <laughs> I'm <laughs> absolutely going to heaven. That sounds like a really good evangelism pitch right there. <laughs> if you don't want that. <laughs> That's terrible. So um, something that you know, uh, people who are familiar with both of you guys and both of your ministries uh, – recognize that there's just a lot of similarities and y'all keep finding uncanny similarities. What, what's the story behind you guys, uh, your paths crossing? Because there were many opportunities that they almost crossed and they didn't. And then finally, when they did, you guys actually finding the similarities and then having a really close relationship. So tell me a little bit of that history and story. Well, I'd heard about Dwayne often because I gave away my tapes and people would come up and say, there's another guy that does that. So that's how I first heard of Dwayne. And somebody gave me some of his teachings. And then when this church burned here, mm-hmm. I remember somebody sent me one of the newsletters and I gave a little offer. And I mean, it wasn't much, but it compared to what I had back then, it was yeah. a lot. Amen. And um, so I knew about Dwayne. And then my niece, um, Rachel, um, Coons, she was leading praise and worship in your Brown book, uh, Brownwood, Brownwood campus. And she kept saying, you got to get with this guy. She gave me a bunch of your teachings and stuff. And then they decided to move to Atlanta instead of to, to Duran. I think you'd offer them a job or something. Mm-hmm. And man, you were concerned. So you called me about that. And that's where I first remember. Seems like we talked, did we talk one time before that? Yeah, we, you had did a, a I had called you uh, the free tape cassette tape ministry had just taken off, and uh, uh, I was sending so many cassette tapes to I think it was Nigeria, Africa, yeah, and it was like thirty thousand a month. That's what I was doing to Ghana. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. See, that's the similarities. I, I, I'm wondering. <laughs> Is there a dimension where he and I are <laughs> that's ex- semi-twins that's exactly in the kingdom? The number, <laughs> 30,000 30, tapes 000. a month to Ghana. <laughs> and it could have been Ghana. I'll have to check. Uh, Rick would know. Uh, but anyway, I was wavering. Am I doing the right thing here? I know I am. I know I heard the Lord, but I just didn't know anybody. And so actually, I didn't call for him to, you know, talk me in or out of doing it or anything like that. But I was hoping to hear maybe something that you had learned that could advise me to help me get to that next level. And uh, (laughs) you were were so, now that I know you, I didn't know you then, but so typical, uh, you know, and I don't know if you just wanted to get off the phone pretty quick or whatever, (laughs) but uh, I said, well, what, what do you think I need to do? And you said, well, what did God tell you to do? And I said, well, God told me to give them away. He said, well, what? If, I got nothing else to tell you. <laughs> that's good advice. I still say that today. Sounds pretty but that's consistent. that's exactly what you said. So I said, well, thank you. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to stick with it and keep doing it. Now, we adjusted. We had to adjust that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I quit sending tapes. Because to of the fruitfulness. We didn't yep. know the fruit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we backed up from that particular deal. But then there was one other time we met. I was still pastoring in the Methodist church. Oh, uh, just now that I know you, looking back on these little, those little things are fun to me. But I had met you in Indiana. You, you were doing a, a conference for a pastor, and Sue was from Indiana. So we planned a trip to, to uh, her parents and, and had all you kids, as a matter of fact, uh, and, and I was going to attend the meeting. And I just met you. I just wanted to meet you. And, uh, and you invited me to, to eat with you. Uh, of course, the pastor didn't invite me to eat. <laughs> and, uh, and I don't want to, I, I would never say who it was. Uh, their heart, as far as I'm concerned, their heart was good. I don't know. I must not have come across real, real good or something. But I remember you asking me, you're pastoring in the Methodist church. Why are you pastoring in the Methodist church? And uh, I was trying to explain to you, well, I'm not a Methodist. That's just the door that opened and I'm just seeking God. And uh, anyway, the pastor's son went to the restroom with me and pretty well, you know, thanked me for coming. 
told you to leave. Yeah, in a subtle way. That That's terrible. It was, it, but it didn't. It didn't. Amazing enough, as immature as I was, still, uh, it didn't bother me. Uh, you know, I, I understood. I was. I felt like I shouldn't have been at the table anyway. Kind of attitude. You're the one that invited me. So that was the last time I had seen you in person. You know, but uh, now he he called me. Quick quick story on my part of it. We have a mutual friend, John. John, I don't think it's wrong to call his name. Uh, if he's a friend. Uh, John Nuzo. And uh, he Im- he imitates, what do you call that? Uh, impersonate people. Yeah. <laughs> and he's good. He's really good. So when you first called uh, and, and said, hi, Dwayne, this is Andrew Walmack. My first thought was John <laughs> Nuzo is pulling a trick on me. <laughs> so I'm going along. And then when you started talking about you, the second thing you said, I've been listening to some of your CDs and really, really enjoying them. Well, I mean, I'm secure in the Lord, but I'm I'm really reality based at times. And I'm thinking Andrew Walmack's not listening to me on CD because uh, I knew of you, uh, and and so I'm thinking, John. You know, what are you pulling? Then you said, my niece gave me these CDs from Brownwood. And I mean, I'm glad I was on the phone because the blood just came out of my face. I probably, oh my gosh, it really is Andrew. And you were so cordial, so polite, um, so kind. It was it was just such a blessing to hear your heart. Uh, and you invited me to the Bible school. That was the bottom line. You said, would you come, you know, and speak at my Bible school. That's when you were down in the Springs. So is that the first time that we ever really physically? That's the first. Fir- I mean, other than that, uh, yes, luncheon that you got kicked out. Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got skillfully removed. Yeah. I didn't get kicked out. Uh, but uh, yeah, that the phone call was the first personal type conversation. And then the first time we really met and got to talk. Matter of fact, uh, I. I remember you asking me uh, after the first session, you know, where would I like to go eat? <laughs> and, I said, and I said, man, if I could just have a hot dog. Yeah, I remember that. I just want I a hot that. dog. Uh, it was like it just, it, I don't know if it blessed you or shocked <laughs> you. Or I don't know what it was, but it was funny, your reaction. And you got me a hot dog. Yeah. You got me a hot dog, I think, from the school. Y'all had hot dogs. What amazed me was the way that, we are so similar in our beliefs, and yet we came from different directions. Mm-hmm. I was a religious Pharisee, and you'd been offended and hurt and had moved the other direction. Mm-hmm. But we both came to the same place to where we recognized that without the Lord, man, we didn't deserve anything. And I don't think most people have ever gotten to that place, Dwayne. I, I, I agree. I, I think, I'm not saying they're not saved, but you've heard me say before, I've had to process, why am I so passionate? Is it my personality? Why am I loyal? Is it just my personality? I believe it's a revelation of God. That when you have a true revelation of God, like if I yielded right now, I could just start crying. Absolutely. Because you just love the Lord and you don't see that in the average Christian. What is the difference? The difference, I believe, is what you just said. I say it this way, that you can't really find God until you come to the end of yourself. And I don't think most people have ever come to the end of themselves. But you did that night that you got born again, and you saw yourself crucified. And and I came to the end of myself because I was a religious Pharisee. And, man, God just showed me what a total hypocrite I was. And we both came to the same place. And, therefore, the acceptance and the love that God gave us overwhelmed us in a way that most people who are still impressed with themselves have never felt. And it give, it changes your whole perspective on God. I, I, I hesitate always to say it. Uh, people want to make a doctrine out of it. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I literally wept for months, just wept at the drop of a hat. Uh, Sue and I were attending, this isn't going to go over big, but at the time, an Episcopalian spirit-filled we wound up going to an Episcopalian Spirit-filled church. Uh, uh, I, I can't even explain how that happened uh, <laughs> and what that looks like. I just know that these people really love Jesus. And anyway, communion in the Episcopal church is is quite a bit different mm-hmm. than your average word and faith or charismatic mm-hmm. church. 
And so, I mean, they're making a big deal out of this. And I'm thinking about that blood and I'm thinking about that bread and I just fell apart. You know, your mother and I, we, we didn't date before mm-hmm. marriage. And then now we've been dating. I, 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 dyslexia has served me well. Everything's <laughs> backwards to me, I guess. But uh, we weren't dating, but we were going to church together because mm-hmm. she was my only friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we, we went to life groups together, Bible studies and stuff. And so anyway, she's sitting next to me and I just start bawling. <laughs> I'll never forget it. You know your mom. Uh-huh. He doesn't know her as well as you know her. <laughs> but she just elbowed me and said, you're going to have to get your act together. <laughs> that sounds exactly like my mom. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> and so I said, I'm trying. I'm trying to get my act together. But that's the blood of Jesus. That's the body of Jesus. <laughs> it was terrible. I'm embarrassed now. But the point is my heart and your heart. You were broken. You you tell Absolutely. stories that are kind of beyond my experience of just like you were in a, a different dimension for months, literally, wanting to go to heaven. Mm-hmm. Now, I wasn't that far gone. Uh, I wanted to still be here, uh, but you need to maybe just jump in on, because I've heard you tell some of it, and it's pretty powerful. But, you know, people that haven't, um, I don't know how to express it, but it's like, People that go to hell and have an experience where they go to hell, they come back with a passion that people that have never had that kind of a revelation don't have. People that have never come to the end of themselves and seen what a mess they are, they don't appreciate how much God loves us. They think, well, God, no wonder he loves me. I'm an awesome person. (laughs) And anybody who has that attitude has never seen the glory of God. Amen. Anybody who makes light of sin has never seen the glory of God. Any person who's impressed with himself has never really seen the glory of God. Because I can guarantee you there's every scriptural example that you can think of. When they saw the glory of God, man, they just fell on their yeah. face. They fell yeah. apart. And we've got a lot of arrogant people, ministers today, and it's because they've never come yeah. to the end of themselves. Even in the New Testament, when John Absolutely. saw, he's resurrected now. So we're, we're, on the, we're on the other side of the cross. Mm-hmm. Even in, even though he knew it was the Lord, there was something that happened in an unveiling where he fell down dead, as if dead. Yep. I don't, I don't think that's talking about again. He's about to physically die. I think right. he. It's like when you see that and you see this, you fall as if dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 I agree. That's the same man that at the Last Supper put his head over on yep. Jesus' chest because <laughs> he knew Jesus as a friend. He, he saw the miracles that he did. He was a believer in Jesus, but he hadn't seen the glory of God. But in Revelation, when he saw the glory of God, man, he fell at his feet as if dead. And there's a lot of Christians that have never seen the glory of God. I didn't see it with my physical eyes. You saw a vision where you actually saw Jesus dying and you saw yourself in Jesus dying. I never have seen anything with my physical eyes, but man, I had it revealed unto me. It came by revelation and uh, it just overwhelmed me. Yeah, let me let me say, I'm not, I'm not sure how I saw what I saw, but I know my eyes were closed. So it wasn't these eyes that saw it. It was evidently the eyes of my heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a revelation. Well, then that's uh, very similar to what happened. Uh, right? So I didn't have an open vision like with my eyes open and seeing it. I was on my face, uh, on the floor, uh, eyes closed. Uh, and and uh, your mom, uh, her story is better than mine. Her story of that experience, because she was in the room, uh, just uh, freaked her out a little bit. Uh, and then, and then, and then, and then me dying. I, I like hearing your mom talk about it, what God was saying to her, how God was right there, how God was using people to confirm what He was saying to her. Uh, so anyway, while personally that was amazing to me, one on one with the Lord, uh, even even Sue sensed the presence of God in both dramatic experiences that I've had. Uh, one in coming alive and one in dying. (laughs) Uh, The Lord's just awesome. But you know, what we're talking about is reflected in most Christians in the fact that they preach things like you got to have positive self-esteem. And there are churches that have self-esteem classes and stuff. 
And I believe that you don't you don't need to esteem yourself. Paul said that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. He says, I have no confidence in the flesh. And yet I would say that the typical church is actually trying to make people feel good about their flesh, not who they are in Christ. Right. I believe in having Christ esteem, not self-esteem. Mm-hmm. But most people don't see that, and Christians are really promoting that I am special. Well, I'm not special. Now, in Christ, I'm special, but that's yeah. because he's in me, and I I totally uh, esteem God. But, but there isn't any good thing in our flesh, and because of that, they— magnify themselves, and it's this self-love that's the source of all of our contention, Proverbs 13, 10. That's the only way that contention comes. When you die to yourself, if, you know, I've used this example, I know you have too, but if you have a corpse in front of you, you could insult the corpse, kick the corpse, spit on the corpse, and if it's a corpse, it's not going to respond. The reason people respond and get so hurt and they're so touchy is because they've never come to the end of themselves. They hadn't died to themselves. They're still promoting self. Yeah, that that process was uh, different for me uh, because of even three years of college where self was everything. And even in college, I was struggling with how, how does Matthew 16, 24 line up with mm-hmm. de- deny yourself? You have to deny yourself, mm-hmm. take up your cross, your cross, your identification with the cross, uh, and follow now Jesus. And so it's only in a, a high Christ esteem that we have that, that security, that confidence. It's really the difference between even confidence and pride. Mm-hmm. There's a confidence in Christ, but if it's after the flesh, it's it's pure pride, and it, it leads to total destruction. And so there's that tension constantly of the flesh and who you are after the flesh, nothing, but then you still have to have that in Christ. While in Christ, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things. John 15.5 never leaves. Without him, I can do nothing. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you have that perfect balance and tension mm-hmm. in any fruit in your life. When you when you when you come over here, you you lose you become fruitless, absolutely fruitless. Oh, I believe, and we haven't talked about this personally. You've heard me minister on it, I think, in some of our conferences out of 2 Corinthians 5:17 there, that I honestly believe all of this strife between the races, the sexes, the financial divisions, between class warfare. Mm-hmm. It's all flesh. Yeah, absolutely. It's because people know themselves after, after the, flesh, the flesh, and they want you to honor their flesh, promote their flesh, get in the streets and march on behalf of their flesh. And these are the things I struggle with, that that stuff is yeah. death, no matter what, how much lipstick you put on that pig. <laughs> It's a pig. <laughs> and it's because of that revelation. So sometimes, and and I don't mind saying it, sometimes I may come across insensitive over that. Mm-hmm. I don't care what your physical nationality is. Yeah. That's the same thing the Jews were doing. Yeah. And and they were rejected after the flesh. Uh, and yet we think we're going to be accepted by God based on anything in our flesh. No, it's the, it's the source of all this contention. Romans chapter 8, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen. And yet so much of Christianity is trying to get your flesh better. And it's not getting your flesh better. It's, it's denying your flesh. It's in losing your life that you find it. And yet the average Christian is trying to <laughs> pa- patch up their flesh. Doesn't yeah. matter if it's USDA choice flesh. It's Amen. still flesh. <laughs> it's flesh. <laughs> The uh, and, and and I'm not being critical. I, I I love these people. No no issue. But well, there's no such thing as a Jewish church and a Gentile church. Mm-hmm. There's no such thing as a cowboy church mm-hmm. and, and and a non cowboy church. A black church, mm-hmm. a white church, a rich church, poor church. That is all flesh, and Satan uses that to not only destroy us individually, but to keep us all separated corporately. Yeah. And the, the the whole reason the letter to the Romans was written. I mean, if that's that's like the magnus opus of Paul's theology, he gives his purpose, his intent at the very end, which is Jews and Gentiles were separating in Rome. Uh, Christian Jews and Gentiles are separating, and he's trying to get them to understand you're one. And so he writes 1 through 15 to get them to see all that about grace, all that about who we are, identity, God's love, 
um, even election, all those kinds of things was written so that people would stop dividing along their nationality lines. Um, and I think we forgot that. You know, with me, my experience, I got this revelation. I mean, it just came as a revelation. I wasn't seeking it. I hadn't prepared for it. It was a revelation that, man, I was a zero with the rim knocked off. My, God showed me my hypocrisy and stuff. And I actually thought he was going to kill me. And so before he killed me, I confessed everything I ever had or ever would do. And I mean, instantly... This, this, people may not understand what I'm saying, but instantly I died to myself. Now, that doesn't mean that that is something I live completely because God has to reveal it to you step by step. And I've grown in it. I'm still growing in it. I mm -hmm. still find times that I'm uh, exerting myself. But I mean, that was my desire right then. And to the best of my ability for 55 years, that's what I've been doing. And I don't think most people have reached that place. You came to that through your experience. And because of that, the way God reveals things to us is totally different than people that are still thinking that they're awesome and that are promoting themselves. And it just changes your whole paradigm, the whole way you look at Scripture. And I don't think most people have done that. But that's the reason I believe that you and I are so much alike is because we came to that same revelation. Yeah. And that's that was our beginning point. I Amen. think that's what makes us so much alike. Hey, that brings us to the end of the first part of this awesome conversation with Andrew Womack and Pastor Dwayne. I really hope that you're enjoying this. Uh, we're excited to bring you part two coming up very soon. Uh, but if you haven't already, be sure to click that subscribe button and be sure to click that notification option so that you are notified when that new episode releases. We really appreciate you taking the time to listen to this episode. Uh, if you'd like to uh, to support our show, we would really appreciate you taking the time to hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, like already said. And if you are moved on your heart that you want to support this show financially and help us reach more and more people, you'll find a giving link in the description of this podcast that you can go and click through and, and be able to, to send a direct donation and just support our show that way. We really appreciate you taking the time to watch. And uh, we hope that this is a blessing to you. Stay tuned for part two that'll be coming up very soon.